Hi there everyone, my name is Dave West, I hope you're all doing well. So welcome back to the ultimate video test and today I'm checking out the iPhone 14 Plus. A quick note, if you're looking to buy an iPhone 14 and you like what you see in this video, everything you see will be exactly the same on the slightly smaller model. Now as with all the ultimate video tests, I'll leave all of the main camera specifications down in the description and I'll just run through some of the high level features throughout this video to help save you some time. I apologise, the sun is not out today, so you're not going to get nice pretty colours. But not everyone is recording video in super bright, perfect conditions. So this is an ideal way to show you how the iPhone handles slightly overcast weather and the end of autumn style colours. Now the front facing camera on the iPhone 14 Plus is all new. It's still a 12 megapixel camera, but this time it gets optical image stabilisation as well as face detection autofocus as you can see here. Now we still get the excellent electronic image stabilization, which has been a bit of an iPhone staple since the dawn of time. And you also get Apple's excellent white stereo sound recording. Now just bear in mind, this is the standard dynamic range version of the video. I will do a separate video test using the HDR stroke Dolby Vision mode to show you how that looks. But even in standard dynamic range, you get excellent video across the board from both the front and the rear cameras. Now, let's just show you a quick test with a stabilization with a quick run. And hopefully you can see there the benefit of Apple's always on super smooth electronic image stabilization. So for comparison, here is 4K 60 frames per second from the selfie camera. So no changes when you change to 4K 60. Some phones you kind of lose some of the stabilization features and things like autofocus, but all of that works perfectly even when you switch up to this higher frame rate mode. Now you can see there's some characteristics blown out highlights as you can see there, especially on the side of my head where the light is catching it from just off to the my right. But don't forget, you can always edit this video later on, or you could always just set the exposure first just to stop those blown out highlights. But I just wanted to show you what it's like in full auto mode, showing you how the phone handles things on the fly. Now you do get cinematic mode on the front facing camera because that always uses HDR by default. And you can't switch it off. I'll put that in the HDR version of the video test. You can see it all together. All right, so moving around to the rear cameras then. So you've got a brace here of 12 megapixel lenses. This is the same ultra wide camera that you find in the iPhone 12 and 13. But don't be fooled by the fact that it's slightly older. This is still a cracking performer in so much that you still get really good quality, consistent color and white balance between both lenses you can see here. and a really wide 120 degree field of view. Now I suspect Apple is doing some hardware trickery with the stabilization because this is one of the only ultra wide lenses I've seen that still gives you the super wide field of view without having to crop in to give you the electronic image stabilization. So just to give you a comparison, there is the wide lens and there's the ultra wide. You can see it does cram in a fair old bit into the lens, whereas some Android devices that I've used, they do crop in. So your ultra wide lens is more like a wide lens and your wide is a telephoto almost in some regards. So kudos to Apple for maintaining the field of view using the ultra wide lens when recording video. All right, so autofocus then from the main camera and you can see there it gets a nice smooth lock on the subject and even if I reach my arm out really far it just maintains that lock on the subject right up until it reaches its limit which is still pretty close to be fair and you still got a really nice detail if you look at the lines at the top of the case there there's no jagged lines or anti-aliasing or anything like that you just get nice 
clean video on your subject, which is cool. So I'll go for a walk up here now just to show you the stability on this lens. Now, note for this lens is that this has been borrowed over from the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, which means it's still a 12 megapixel sensor. We get the really cool sensor shift technology. So rather than just the top of the lens, the little round part being stabilized optically, whole lens moves around inside the chassis of the handset. So as I move left, it'll slightly shift right just to maintain a steady image, which is a really cool feature. So let's try out the electronic image stabilization with the main lens and just see how good the stabilization is with a quick run. Now, hopefully that will look good when I play it back. You'll notice when you're recording video with the iPhone 14 Plus is that the image kind of shakes and jitters around inside the viewfinder. But when you play it back, the iPhone's done all the magic and stabilize the footage so it looks nice and smooth. So there's the front and rear cameras just in their standard mode. And quickly before I move to the action mode and show you how that works, you do get up to, up to three times digital zoom. Now it looks a bit broken up and lacking in detail. You can see some noise creeping in there, but two times digital zoom is perfectly usable and just allows you to get that little bit closer to your subject and you can still pinch all the way back to the ultra wide lens. You get that seamless lens switching between zoom and your ultra wide camera. Brilliant. All right, so also new for the iPhone 14 Plus is the action mode. And as you can see here, if I just go for a quick run here, you get some really good stabilization from both the ultra wide and also the main lens, as you can see here. The action mode on the iPhone 14 Plus differs slightly to the 14 and 14 Pro, sorry, and 14 Pro Max, and uh, it tops out at 2.8K rather than the 4K you get on the Pro models. And you can also drop it down to 1080p. I would suggest just using the 2.8K mode in order to get the best out of the footage. Now, as a comparison, here is action mode at 2.8k at 60 frames per second from the ultra wide camera and you can see there how the ultra wide anger copes with the anger camera even with the action mode option on and then with the main lens i just do the same here with the benefit of the center shift technology it should be even smoother using the main camera now one thing to note when using 4k 60 2.8k 60 sorry is that you can use the lens switch toggle but what you're doing is you're actually just cropping off the ultra wide lens only at 60 frames per second not 30 so do bear that in mind when you're using the zoom function, because you're not actually just switching to the main camera, you're just zooming off the ultra wide camera. So the footage might look a bit crappy. All right, so finishing off at 4K 60 from the ultra wide camera on the back of the phone, just to round out the video. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the selection of video modes on the iPhone 14 Plus. Now I think for this particular model, this would be the sort of ideal model for anyone who doesn't want all the pro features and things like RAW and all of that stuff you get on the pro models. So on that basis, the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus were great daily companions for things like video and just casual photos. Expensive, but you get what you pay for and the actual quality of the video is always excellent in my opinion. So if you've got any comments or questions about anything you've seen in this video, then please leave those down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new around here, then please do consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos like this coming on the channel very, very soon. 
And don't forget, there'll be a HDR version of this video test, which will be uploaded shortly. And I'll show you how it looks with this super crisp video videos you'll get using the high dynamic range option. But for now, this has been my ultimate video test in standard dynamic range for the iPhone 14 Plus. My name's Dave West, and I'll catch you guys later.